every client project with a mood board. This really helps me to get the clients excited about our branding process and make sure we're on the same page for the design going forward. I'm Erin Alexander and I am a Squarespace and brand designer for bloggers and creative entrepreneurs. Today I'm going to show you how to create a mood board for your blog that's going to help create brand consistency and inspire you to do your We're going to be using Adobe Illustrator which is one of the best design programs out there and you can get a free trial for 30 days. So let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't already, go ahead and go on Pinterest or Unsplash or Kaboom Pics and find the images that you feel like really represent your brand. And then you're going to want to save them to a folder. I just title it Inspiration and save it inside your, your business folder so that you know exactly where it is and it's easy to grab those pictures. After you've collected those pictures, then we can go ahead and get started in Illustrator. You're going to open up the template like we have here. You're going to click on File and Place. And then you're gonna find that folder of inspiration that you've already gathered. Select one of the pictures you wanna use. Go ahead and click place, and you will see a little preview. Now what you do is you just click and drag to get the picture to show up. Another option is just to click without dragging, and that's gonna make the picture full size. So if your pictures are very large, if you got them off of Unsplash or Kaboom pics, they are going to be very large, so you don't want to do that because it's going to take up the whole screen. So just click and drag it a little bit to make a smaller size picture. Now here comes the fun part. You get to put the pictures inside the collage. It doesn't really matter where they go because as you're working, you're going to see what works and what doesn't, and you're going to be able to move things around. I'm just going to start by placing this image here. On the corner of the images, you're going to see anchor boxes. This allows you to resize the images. So you're going to click on one corner and move the image around. Press and hold shift while you're doing this to keep the images proportions. If you use, um, if you don't hold shift while you're changing the size, you'll see that you'll be skewing the image. And this is a big no-no. You never want to change the proportions of an image. So just press and hold shift and it'll move them proportionally. Okay, so you have the image and you're going to click object, arrange, send to back. Um, and you see here on the side, this is the shortcut and I use that all the time. It's shift command, open bracket or close bracket, whether you're sending it to the back or to the front. So those are some commands that you definitely want to get to know. Okay, so go ahead and send the image to the back. Now you need to select the picture and the box on top of it. So to do that, we leave this box, leave the image selected, and now press shift and click on the edge of that top box. So now they're both selected. And here is what we do. We go back to object, scroll all the way down to clipping mask, and press make. That's another shortcut that I use all of the time. Now you have it in place. Now one thing you'll notice that the border that we've already selected has disappeared. That's something that just kind of happens when you place a picture in. So this particular template uses a stroke of six. So just go ahead and select six and white. Now another thing we can do is change those all at the end and I'll show you how to do that. So now we're just going to keep going and adding more and more pictures. One thing you can also do is add a bunch of pictures at one time. So if you have three pictures, you can go ahead and place those on the side here. Just click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. And then you can work with more than one at a time. And this is a really great way to kind of just see it all as you're doing it. It's a, This is how I almost always do it is I bring them onto the sides and then arrange them. It's really up to how you feel comfortable working. I think I really like the simplicity of this picture. So again, this is when I would use shift command, close bracket, shift and hold while clicking the top box. And then again, go to clipping mask and make. That's also command seven. I use that a lot. And you just keep placing images. And one thing I like to do is make sure that things are balanced. So if there's coffee at the top, then I might do coffee at the bottom if there's two images with coffee. You don't want it to be like all in a row. That's pretty important in making sure that things are evenly spaced. Um, so let's do some more. So let's do this one 
Now on this one, let's say that I only, I don't want this brown hat. It doesn't fit the brand. Oh, to zoom in, you can use down here, there's this um, zoom box. If you're using like a touch mouse pad, you can just pinch your fingers, like spread your fingers out and that'll zoom in. Okay, so I definitely don't want that brown hat. I don't want that brown blanket. I just really want the picture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this picture. So um, you see when I put my mouse up over by the corner, it gives me twisting arrows. If I click there, I can turn the picture. Now one thing that's really cool is if you press shift, it'll make it move in um, increments so that it stays straight, so that pictures aren't crooked. Um, you can also type in the numbers here if you know exactly, if you're very mathematical and you know exactly which way you want the pictures to go, um, you can type it in there. So here I'm going to send this to the back so I can kind of see the spacing. I'm going to bring it back to the front so I can see what's going on and I'm going to make it a lot bigger. I just want to zoom in on these pictures um, and not the brown and not, I just really want the pictures like that Polaroid picture. So I've zoomed in really far. Now I'm going to send it to the back. Whoops, send it to the back. And now I will make that mask. And you'll see I just zoomed in on the picture. However, I can still see a little bit of the hat on the corner here and I don't want that at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the picture so that it isolates just that group. And I'm going to use my arrows to move it over. And now you will see that I've, I can adjust the picture with uh, more precision than I can just using the mouse. Using your up and down arrow or your left and right arrow, you can get in more precision with your images. Okay, that's another thing I want to do on this one because I don't like how this circle is over top of this image. So I'm going to use my arrows to move it all the way over. And it's still a little bit too much, so I'm just going to move the circle because you can do that. You can make these your own. These are just templates and templates are not set in stone. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more pictures. Let's see what I got here. I have a lot of pictures in the same style, so those will work great in this particular mood board. Again, I'm gonna put them on the side so I can really see what's going on with the pictures and emphasize the pieces that I want to. I really like this one. I like that plant, but I mostly like like the plant with the open white space. So I'm going to try to highlight that section of it. Press and hold shift while I do that. Press command 7, and it's a little too low, so I'm going to use my arrows to move it up. Now, one cool thing is if you use your arrows while holding shift, it'll move it up in increments of 10, so it goes a little bit faster. Then you can click off and really see what's going on here. Let's see, over here, this one will work right here. It needs to be a little bit bigger. There's a lot of computer in this one, so I'm gonna move it over here, send it to the back, go ahead. And you'll see, once you get the hang of it, it really starts to go fast. Okay, so for this one, I really like the style of this desk uh, with the gold accents. I don't necessarily love that pink purse, so I'm just going to crop that out inside my mask. Oh, that's a little bit too big, so I'm going to click on that, hold shift while I do this, and move it up. So you see more of the desk, less of the computer screen. That's perfect right there. Okie dokie. So now I have these two little squares and small squares are great places to put patterns because you don't really want your pattern to be over the top taking up most of the space. So it's a good place to put a pattern or a texture that you really want to add into the brand. So I'm going to go ahead and put it here, send it to the back, press shift, command seven, and it pulls it in there. Okay, now this one is another good place to put a texture or a pattern. Okay, so now these boxes here I've saved for colors. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper. The brown is actually a good color because you'll see brown pop up here, 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 here. Um, so that's a good color to start with. That's a good one. And then we can select, um, there's a lot of pink. I like that light pink this teal over here. 
So one thing um, I like to do when I'm building a color palette is I also make a copy of it and I put it up at the top here. And you see that it's up at the top there and that's so that I can, and I overlap them, that's so that I can see the colors together because just pulling colors doesn't um, necessarily mean they coordinate. We like to pull colors and make sure they go together. And the reason I overlap them is so that I can see them touching one another. Um, that's a big important part. Like this brown just does not go. We need a little bit lighter, more tan brown. There we go. So now I can select this one, make it match. And get those borders back. So click and drag over all of the pictures to select them all. With the properties panel on the right, you will select the white fill and a stroke of six points. And there you have it, we're all done. For more Adobe Illustrator tips and tricks, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Or you can find me at erinalexanderdesignstudio.com.